Hi, this is Mingu So. This is about basics of digital low dropout integrated voltage regulator. Next slide. Who am I? My name is Mingu So. I'm an associate professor at the Columbia University in New York. My research interests are in ultra low power intelligent hardware design using both analog and digital circuit for application like embedded mobile and internet of thing application. I'm a member of the technical program committee of the International Solid State Circuits Conference and also a member of the Solid State Circuit Society. This year, I was invited to give a tutorial at IESCC 2020 and this presentation is a reduced version of the tutorial. Next slide. Please note, a PDF of this mini tutorial is available free of charge for your download on the Society Resource Center. SSCS members can view over 100 past full-length ISCC tutorials for free. SSCS members can also view many past webinars for free online. This mini tutorial is dedicated to digital load dropout integrated voltage regulators. Next slide. Today's SOC integrated a number of cores and variety of building blocks. In order to supply a power to this SOC, a typical practice is to employ bulk DC-DC converter for their high power conversion efficiency. However, bulk DC-DC converter requires to have large passives such as inductors and therefore it is not easy to integrate them in a chip. However, the need to provide an independent voltage domain for different cores is ever growing. And LDO is currently considered the preferred choice of voltage regulation solution for creating such independent voltage domain. This is because LDO do not require large passive and this makes it easier to integrate on a single chip. Next slide. So this slide shows the digital LDO on the right side and analog LDO uh, on the left side. Analog LDO receive the input voltage from the top and produce the output voltage to the output to supply a current to the load circuit. Analog LDO implement a feedback, negative feedback control loops to regulate their output voltage toward free reference. To do so, it employ analog amplifier, which sends the difference between output voltage and reference voltage and produce the gate voltage, which is uh, called VG and modulating the resistance of the power transistors. This way, it can regulate the Vout close to VRF. However, this feedback loop is not infinite bandwidth. Therefore, when load current changes too fast, the feedback loop becomes ineffective. To support such a case, analog LDO employs output capacitor. On the right side is the typical architecture of the digital LDO. The key idea is to replace the analog amplifier in analog LDO with the ADC and digital controller circuit and the DAC, which is essentially power pad array. Similarly to the amplifier, the ADC sends the difference between alpha voltage and reference voltage and produce the digital code, which enters the digital controller and compute based on the chosen control law. The resulting digital code turn it on and off individual transistors of the power pad array and effectively modulate their resistance. This way, they also uh, regulate the output voltage toward the VREF or reference voltage. Next slide. Analog and digital LDOs have their advantages and disadvantages. Analog LDO can achieve very high bandwidth and that result in fast transient response and load regulation. 
It also allow or enable high power supply rejection ratio, also known as PSLR. The ripple on the output is also small, which is important for sensitive load. However, analog radio requires a complex analog circuit design and also exhibit limited scalability to low input voltage. The control loop gain also depends on the operating voltage. On the other hand, digital LDO requires no major analog component, and this lends itself to a synthesizable design and increase the productivity of the design process. It also scales well for low voltage operation, and finally, it can decouple loop gain from operating voltage. However, digital LDO exhibit lower bandwidth, lower PSLR, and larger output ripple compared to the analog LDO counterpart. Next slide. So in the poor tutorial, we're gonna introduce the key specification of a digital LDO in detail. Here is the list of the specification that we're gonna cover, which include silicon area, input reference and output voltage, edge time of the load current change, voltage droop and overshoot, response and settling time, load, quiescent, power pad, and capacitor current, peak current, and power efficiency, dropout voltage, power supply reduction ratio, load regulation performance FOMs, such as picosecond FOM and picoparad FOM, maximum and minimum load current, DAG and ADC number of a bit, dead zone voltage, DAG step size, and IR drop voltage. Next slide. We're going to also introduce a range of recent techniques adopted in the state-of-the-art digital LDO architecture. These techniques can be classified into four different ways or four different cases, uh, which are summarized in four different column, column in this slide. The first column is about control law, meaning what kind of control law is adopted in digital control. This include integral uh, feedback controls, multi-bit ADC-based control, proportional and integral PI feedback control, feedforward control, and binary search feedback control. The second column represents the techniques based on how we trigger the samplings and the updating the output. It includes time-driven synchronous triggering, adaptive sampling clock-based triggering, event-driven asynchronous triggering, self-triggering, and domino triggering. The third column is about how to design the power fed in the uh, digital LDO. The first one in this category is digital PPET, and the second one is the digital NPET-based power fed design. The last column is about how to hybridize digital and analog circuits in control loop. There's all digital solution, and other techniques include parallel PI controls, analog assisted digital, and hybrid digital and analog implementation. Next slide. This slide shows the very basic architecture of the digital LDO based on one of the earlier papers in this area. It employs ADC, which has uh, essentially one bit uh, count, and this ADC is basically a single voltage comparator. It implements the digital control, specifically integral feedback control, and produces the digital code that directly going into the power pad. Therefore, it is belong to the all digital control. The dropout voltage of the LDO is 50 millivolt or more, and the power pad consists of uniformly sized 256 PFAT transistors. Therefore, the effective number of the bit for the DAC is 8. This particular design supports the maximum current of 200 microamps with the output capacitor of 100 nanofarad. ADC and C controllers triggered by the synchronous clock whose frequency is 1 megahertz. Next slide. 
In the tutorial, we will we'll also uh, walk through the equations for analyzing the stability of the feedback system. We will particularly focus on the methodology called state space representation, which essentially creating the matrix forms of equation uh, and uh, the, uh, find that whether the matrix IEM value is less than one to make sure the system is stable. Next slide. We also include a number of references. Uh, these are some of the selected references. And given that there's a huge popularity in the recent research work, there's uh, uh, more than 100 references uh, referred in the tutorial. Next. List of the past IACC edu tutorials available for free to all SSES members on the Society's YouTube channel. For example, there is a few, exam the few examples include VSI X 2016, CICC X 2017, etc. And uh, ISCC EDU 2020 and ESR CERC 2020 will be available in a moment. Next slide. List of the past ISCC tutorials are also available for free to all SSCS members on the SSCS Resource Center. It includes over 140 tutorials and 56 lectures uh, for the short courses, and 2018 short courses and tutorials, 2019 ISCC short courses and tutorial, and 2020 ISCC short course and tutorial will be available in the following times. Next slide. There is a number of the benefits for the SCCS member, members, including access to the online tutorials, short courses, and monthly webinars, subscri subscriptions to SSCS publication, registration discount, more than 100 class rooted chapters and around the world with a lot of activities, distinguished lecture programs with active roster of world class lectures, and there's also a student travel grant, pre doctoral achievement award networking at young professional event at SSCS conferences. Thank you for watching. If you have any question, feel free to contact me. Thank you again.